What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Blueprint. Tonight, we got another quick hitters episode. Uh, just breaking down some recent news across the sports world. Um, but yeah, it's going to be fun. You know, just like I said, quick hitters. You know. Quick hitters, man. It's becoming one of my favorite things. I, I always do this. One. It's, it's <laughs> becoming one of my favorite things to do, man, on this pod. It's just fun. Yeah, for sure. And uh, anything you want to start off with? Um, I guess oh, we'll- yeah. Uh, everyone, drink. keep drinking your water, man. It's important to hydrate. I'm trying to drink like one or two of these a day. Definitely got to pee a lot. I've been peeing a lot for sure. Um, but uh, you got to hydrate, man. You feel better. Yep. Keep hydrating. It's become a, a educational pod as well. Yeah. Know? Last pod, we talked about like the best water um, on the planet too. So, yep. you know, we talked, we, we gave, basically gave core the best promo ever. Like, I feel like we need, we need like 20% of that, that yeah, company's need- revenue, man. <laughs> <laughs> they need to sponsor us um, as quickly as possible. But yeah, I guess uh, for my first thing, I want to go with something you know kind of funny to me. Um, I bet. So I don't know what this guy's name is or how to pronounce it. I, I forget. But the uh, a lot of talks about the flag football in the 2028 Olympics um, and their quarterback basically saying he's more uh, has a better IQ than Patrick Mahomes, pretty much. Um, What's what's your, what's your thoughts on that? And uh, who who should be our flag football quarterback if we do send one from the NFL? Yeah, I um I saw the clip. Um, first off, I want to say shout out to him. Um, doing his thing on flag football, I never heard of him before, but I guess he's like the Tom Brady of flag football, apparently, bro. <laughs> but um, I I thought it was hilarious. Um, and I've never seen him play, but I laughed. I literally laughed. Sent it to my friend. And he laughed, and we laughed. So I, I don't really know what to think about it. Um, I just think that's kind of crazy, uh, <laughs> just to be calling out the best player in the world, best quarterback in the world. But hey, yeah, yeah. I don't. If, if you think so highly, you know, that sense maybe if you want to get Pat Mahomes respect since you're calling him out, come to the NFL and see how well you do. Facts. See if that flag football, you know, game translates to the league and. Maybe you're right. You know what I'm saying? Maybe you'll be right. I don't know. Maybe maybe he is the goat best quarterback ever. You know, maybe maybe, maybe he is. But no, I, I thought it was hilarious. Um, yeah, that's <laughs> like I genuinely just laughed. <laughs> it was, it, I it couldn't was take it seriously, bro. I was just. It was just. It's just funny to think about. But yeah, honestly, I whether it's Mahomes or like Lamar, I think Lamar would be. So good in flag football too. Uh, I don't really know how the the flag football rules work. I know it's obviously flag and not tackle, but like, people have been but, coming at Mahomes lately, man. You got people always talking about his dad bod. You got this flag football, you know, Olympic guy, you know, saying that he shouldn't be the starter. Um, you got you know Raiders rookies who we don't know their name pulling up Kermit the Frog. Uh, <laughs> whatever whatever it was like mocking him like i'm like guys like can we chill like i really don't want the chiefs to win three in a row like i don't know if that's good for nfl football like can we can we calm down i I feel like a lot of people are just motivating him even more yeah bro like a bad thing for yeah bro like at at this point like he's won back to back he's won three rings like Y'all really pressing him and getting him getting him that motivation and fuel again. Like I don't understand like what everyone's doing, bro. Like and they didn't put him number one on the top one hundred list as well. They put Tyree Kill there. So I'm just like, bro, like, why are we doing this? Like yeah. <laughs> why are we doing this, bro? Like yeah. if they go back to back, uh if they three P, like that like that's crazy. In the NFL, that's crazy, you know? Yeah. Never been done. Um uh... And also, last preseason game, whatever it was, the behind the back pass, so yeah, it was like that was crazy. But yeah, uh, at that point, I saw that and I was just like, yeah, they might win again. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that yeah, because now, bro, people are going to start like being ready for that, like, which is crazy. Um, you think there's no way he pulls that out in season? I I, yeah, I, I doubt it too, but. Yeah, whether it's Travis Kelsey throwing laterals or Mahomes throwing behind his back, you know, it's just crazy stuff. But, yeah, yeah. I think Lamar, though, for the flag football team would actually be 
pretty far. Um, yeah, he he like yeah, he'd be, he'd nice. be so crazy. Yeah, he'd be he'd be nice. Um, but yeah, another uh, guy who would be really good too is Justin Fields, and that kind of carries into my next yeah. uh, topic. So Justin Fields, obviously the Steelers quarterback, you know, starting quarterback hasn't been named yet. You know, we're getting close to the season, about you know one or two weeks away, but. Apparently, Justin Fields has said, I've shown what I can do to be the Steelers starting quarterback. So he feels as if he has proved enough. What do you think about that whole situation? Yeah, it's it's going to be very interesting to see really the whole season, how that plays out. And, you know, I honestly – I think both will start at some point. Yeah. Um, yeah, I just I, – I find it hard to believe that Fields has – Fields has to do, like, I feel like he has to do a lot in preseason and in these uh, training camp to solidify that spot because I feel like it's Russell Wilson's to lose, uh, or at least going into that situation in camp and preseason. But I agree. But I, I do like, you know, if Fields confident, that's obviously a great sign. You always want to have confidence um, coming into a new situation. So shout out to him, man. I, I hope he does or gets some time uh, as a starter for sure because, I mean, it's just as a football fan, I'd rather see him than Russell Wilson starting. Um, yeah, I think I think a lot of people will. He's an electrifying player, bro. Like, there's not, there's not a lot of quarterbacks you see who can just drop back, roll to the left, roll to the right, scramble out, juke huh, huh, one guy, juke huh, huh, one guy, two stiff arm the other guy, and run for an 80 yard touchdown. Like he can he can do that, but that's yeah. crazy though. Another thing that's crazy, we did a poll a few weeks ago um, about who should start for the Steelers, like on our like Instagram page. Go follow Blueprint Pod, by the way, as well. Yes, sir. And, and don't forget to like and subscribe as well while I'm at it. But um, we did a poll, and like I know me and you have been saying it's rush job to lose, really, but it was pretty close, and uh, more people voted Justin Fields. So we're going to see what that boy Mike Tomlin decides to cook up. But interesting, man. Yeah, it's it's kind of like the old veteran that's really struggled lately versus the young electric player that you know has something to prove. So it's kind of a unique situation for him, but. And if you just think about the aura too, like Fields got so much more aura than Russell Wilson, you know. Like I feel like we got to factor that in as well. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, no, definitely. <laughs> um, it's not even close. Like <laughs> it's not like, close. Like I'm waiting for like a, a Steelers country lights ride, something, something stupid like that. Bro, um, if bro. he says that, bro. Like, like that's this is not the organization to do it. And Pittsburgh Steelers fans, like the franchise, is tough, hard nosed, blue collar teams. Like that's how they always been, bro. Like you come in there with that Steelers country, let's ride. Like no, bro, no one's trying to hear that, bro. Like <laughs> no one's trying to hear that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so speaking of starters, I guess my next thing, uh, Bo Nix, starting quarterback, announced for the Broncos. Um, not really surprised by that. You know, they're in a situation where it's not much competition in that uh, QB room with respect to, you know, Zach Wilson. Um, but yeah, Bo Nix, I think. And Jared Stidham. Yeah, Stidham would have been the uh, other option. Um, yeah. Zach Wilson's definitely QB3. Uh, yeah. Got it. Yeah. But I think all the rookie quarterbacks know their role, uh, except for Drake May. Um, I think that's – I mean, Michael Panix is going to be the backup. And obviously, uh, all the other rookies have been announced starters. So, you know, what's your uh, take on Bo Nix and, you know, kind of the hype surrounding him, at least from the Broncos' view? Yeah, um, obviously, Bo Nix is known for his accuracy. He was the most accurate quarterback in college football last year. Um, he was picked, you know, by Sean Payton as well. You know, this is a guy that we didn't know if he would go in the first round. Um, so he's picked by Sean Payton, and um, Sean Payton like Payton likes guys who are gonna go through their progressions and win in the pocket, and Bo uh, Bo Nix is pretty good at that. You know, there's some things that obviously he can get better at, in my opinion, like just his overall playmaking, because like he doesn't have the physical attributes to be like a guy like Caleb Williams and make those off-platform throws. So he's gonna have to be really consistent and like you know calculated in what he does, but. Yeah, it, it, I'm kind of interested to see how he does, to be honest with you. I probably – I don't know if I'll be watching, like, like a, a ton of Broncos games. Like, if it's, like, if it's like primetime Monday night and it's, like, Steelers, um, 
I don't know. Let, let's say it was like Steelers, Packers, and it was like Broncos, like uh, Colts. Like I'll probably be watching the Steelers game. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But like, yeah, I will, it'll be interesting. But I did see something about Drake May though that it said that Jared Mayo said that Drake May is ready to run a huddle. Um, so I yeah. think I think he'll probably end up being that guy. Yeah, I do too. Um, but yeah, like I said, I I do think it's gonna take some time for him. You know, I feel like he's gonna be one of those guys that takes longer to uh, really show his progression um, and development. So, and obviously, when you got, I mean, we be the our wr ones and wr twos for the for the Patriots. I mean, so yeah, man, I'll be running, I'll be running. You know, those third down go routes. You know, trying to get us the first down. Yeah, uh, yeah the, the the Patriots weapon room is trash. Like it's for sure the worst in the league. I saw I don't remember the exact stuff, but like on a podcast I saw it was like their weapon room, like their just overall everything explosiveness. Like they were ranked like fifth to last or like lower in like every single category, bro. Yeah, it's it's uh, bad. It's it's really bad. <laughs> nah, bro, it's horrible, dog. Uh-oh. Yeah, so it'll be interesting. Um, Bo Nix, you know, obviously Sean Payton has said a lot of lot of nice things about him, and you know, I I, I am interested to see how the Broncos do because, um, it's, you know, it's not a great roster by any means, but it's gonna be something if Bo Nix really comes out playing good football, like uh, that'll show me a lot, a lot at the beginning. So. Yeah, don't get me wrong. Like, the Broncos are going to be one of the worst teams in football. Like, there's no doubt about it. Um, but, like, I'm still interested to see what he does. Because, like, you mentioned Sean Payton said tonight a lot of good things about him. Sean Payton don't say a lot of good things about everyone. You know, it's more harsh things. It's more disrespectful. Like, he would just – like, the way he was frying Nathaniel Hackett, I was like, my goodness. Um, yeah, the, the worst quarter or the worst coaching job in NFL history or something. Yeah, but like that's that's bold, bro. Like oh, man. in NFL history, like he was like sure about that. Like yeah. in NFL history. Like you he, know he thought he thought he thought it was still prime Russ from Seattle, like that he was coming into and then yeah, he he learned fast that Russell Wilson's no longer that guy. Um Yeah, man. Um so Commanders Eagles news, my ops, you know, as as you could call it. You know, the Commanders traded former first round wide receiver Jahan Dotson to the Eagles. Um the Philadelphia Eagles send a third round pick and two seventh round selections. Before you go, um wait, oh, and then um oh okay, okay, then the Washington twenty twenty five fifth round pick. Yeah. But bro. Commanders, I don't really know what you're doing. Um, you want to surround your rookie quarterback with as much help as possible. You lost Curtis Samuel as well. Jahan Dotson, I think he could have had a bigger role this year. He's been one of those guys that's kind of been behind McLaurin and Samuel. And, you know, he's had huge moments. So I thought he could have had a bigger role this year. But why would you trade him in division? In division. Like, like how does that make sense? To an Eagles offense who has a ton of weapons. Now they have A.J. Brown, Devonta Smith. Saquon Barkley, a healthy Jalen Hurts, a competent offensive coordinator, Dallas Goddard, and a, and still a really good O line despite Jason Kelsey leaving. So why would you trade him in division? You're gonna have to play him two times a year. But that's Commanders football for you, pretty much. Like that's Commanders organization football for you, pretty much. And and you know their head coach now, Dan Quinn, came from what team? Mm-hmm. Cowboys. Exactly. So I'm glad we got rid of him because, like, not a great start. Not a great start um, to your coach career in Washington. Obviously, still rock with Dan, though. Um, I hope you have success, just not against us. But I, I like Dan Quinn, but that's yeah. not a good move, brother. You know, that's not it's, a good start. Yeah, this, that's – I agree <laughs> with everything you just said. I got much to add. Um, you know, I think – Jaden Daniels, like you want to surround your guy, um, your number two overall pick with weapons, because you know it's been a while since the Commanders have had any promising quarterback play uh, consistently, and so now you trade a you know really solid wide receiver in division to a team that already has one of the best duo of wide receivers 
in the league, one of the best for sure. And and they had Saquon Barkley from the Giants. You know, the Eagles are just fleecing everybody this division. Bro, like they every year, like they just find a way yeah. to just finesse people, bro. Yeah. So uh, annoying. The last thing I gotta say about this is I saw some tweet. It was like the Eagles are just that that person on Madden that just fleeces everybody in trades. <laughs> They really are, bro. They're, they really are. Um, they're like they're really like the Celtics, like the Celtics before, like obviously winning the championship this year. Like from 20, 2023 on to like twenty seventeen, they're like literally the Boston Celtics, where they always have these championship rosters, but like, and they have these crazy squads, but they can just never put it all together. Um, really, after the jail, after the win over Brady, though. Um, but yeah, bro, I'm just like, why would you trade him in division? <laughs> like, that's like you guys trading Roma Dunsey to like the, the lion, the lions. Like, <laughs> like, even if you, it, even if you saw j- draft capital like that, like, I don't know if that's enough to trade him in division to a rival like that. Like, yeah, like what, what did Dotson do to like? Make you want to trade him too? Like that's why I said, like spitting Dan Quinn coffee in the morning or something like that, and got caught on camera. Uh, that's the only gotta, thing I can think of. Like, yeah, there's got to be something there. Because um, yeah, I mean, that's the Commanders organization for you, man. Like, it, it there, there's just some teams. I know we talked about this. Other, there's just some teams that probably ain't going to win a Super Bowl, bro. In our life, you know, they are on that list. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I got. One more NFL. Have they, won, have they won a Super Bowl before? I don't think so. Yeah. Well, I don't. I don't know. Let me look it up real quick, bro. I, they, they I'm just curious. Look, you probably have. We know the Jaguars haven't. They probably won one back in like 1990. Yeah, they they, they have three, I think. Okay. Okay. It, it just feels like two different franchises, though, because, like, obviously the name change and, like, yeah, like it, it just feels like a way different. Yeah. I'm not speaking on the Washington Redskins organization. I'm speaking yeah. on the Commanders. Oh, yeah. No, the command. First of all, the Commanders is a terrible name. Um, <laughs> like, that team is never winning. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, bro, that is a horrible name, bro. Like, I got, I got, uh. So yeah. One more quick NFL, then one NBA topic. So uh, wait, hold up. Interesting fact: the Jaguars are one of four current NFL teams who have never played in the Super Bowl. Can you guess the other three? Ooh. I'll give you. I'll give you. Texans? I'll give you three strikes. I'll give you three strikes. Texans. Yep. Because they're newer. Um, That's gonna change though, baby. CJ Stroud uh, on the way. Uh, <laughs> The Titans. That's first strike. Detroit. There's no way they've been to the Super Bowl. Yeah, you got it. One more. You said outside the Jaguars. Um, hmm. Trying to think about the divisions. The Brown. Uh, the Browns. Booyah! Yes, sir. You cooked. I ain't going to lie. You cooked. Yeah, I was thinking of the worst. I was going to say the Raiders, but they felt like a team that's been there at least once. Uh, bro, I really just said play. booyah, bro. I don't know why I said that. I know why I said that. I'm going to cut that out for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Boom. Bang. Mike Breen, bang. Oh. Uh, you should have just hit the Tatum. We did it. <laughs> oh, my God. We did it. Oh, my gosh. Talk about. Talk about negative aura for a night. That's I saw. I saw so many tweets like Tatum lost so much aura, bro. I, I I just like I'm not really tweeting and I'm not a part of the Tatum slander, but just reading it is just hilarious. It is, it is funny. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, my uh, last NFL thing: um, Falcons obviously get Jew down. We talked about that. They also picked up Simmons, um, so now they got Simmons. They also paid AJ Terrell. Um, obviously got Jesse Bates last year. So a bunch of guys that are older, but, you know, have had really good careers. So uh, just what's your take on the Falcons um, going into this year? Um, Because they definitely have – they got some good players for sure. 
Yeah, um, they you know they have a talented team, and obviously it's able to be used that because they now have a quarterback in Kirk Cousins, you know who has you know a resume of you know being a a good quarterback in this league, like always around that like twelve to sixteen range, you know, as a quarterback. But he's coming off an Achilles injury. There's and that's my whole thing. There's just a lot unknown with the Falcons that I'm not really a fan of to really like bet on them going into the year until I see them play. It's like Kirk Cousins coming off Achilles injury. He's already old. I think he's like 37, 38 years old. Um, I like I do like the AJ Terrell move because you're bringing him back. That's a guy who's been there in that foundation. He can still provide culture as well. New head coach. Um, you know, you're bringing in Matthew Judon. That's just a new piece as well. Bijan uh, wasn't really utilized well last year. Kyle Pitts wasn't really u- utilized well. Now we kind of get to see how really good Kyle Pitts is. Same with kind of Drake one. And so, like, I just feel like there's too much unknown with the Falcons, even though it is a weak division for me to really just buy into that. But I feel like I have to see at least half the season for me to really have a good grasp on what they want to do. But right now, I wouldn't, like, put all my chips on them being a force in the NFC. No, definitely. Yeah, the personnel is there. Yeah. Obviously, the main thing is Kirk and his health. Um, yeah. They do have a really good old line, too. Uh, so, I, the one thing I just want to see is Bijan, like, and Kyle Pitts, like you said, just have have a lot of touches, have a lot of targets, um, stuff like that. So, you know, defensively, we'll see. You know, they, their pass rush was not great at all last year, um, which is another why, reason why that taking Michael Penix was a big surprise. Um so, because they could use that best, they could have took the best defensive edge rusher at that spot, but you know, obviously they didn't. But then now, getting some guys on that defense like Judon, some veterans, um, we'll see how they do. But yeah, I kind of kind of agree. You know, I don't, I don't think they're legit contenders. I, just, but also I just kind of want to see how uh, really just Kirk plays and everything. Yeah, Kirk in Atlanta is dope, though. I will say that's a that's a cool spot for him. I like that for sure. Um, so um, one thing that I had is Kyle Shanahan kind of talked about Trent Williams, you know, contract situation. Obviously, he hasn't been given that contract as well. Regarded as probably the best left tackle, maybe one of the best offensive linemen in football. Um, he just said, hopefully, it's getting close. What are your thoughts on that? Because how significant could do you think it could be for the Niners if they don't bring a guy like Trent Williams back? Uh, I think it'll be very significant. Um, outside of him, the old line is very average, below average. Oh, it's uh, garbage. It's garbage. Yeah, he's one of the best overall players in the league. Um, so he, he has a huge impact on that squad. So yeah, I mean they have to bring him back. Um, for any shot to going back to the Super Bowl and potentially winning a Super Bowl. I think he has to be a key piece of this team. So um, whatever they can do to get him back, I think they have to, even yeah. at his age, you know. So It's really going to be interesting, man, because, you know, I would obviously I agree with a lot you're saying. Um, they, the offensive line would take a huge hit without Trent Williams, and I think without him they're probably a bottom 10 offensive line in the in the league. But it's going to be interesting. How It's really interesting how, like, the Niners are already having these contract issues, even though Brock Purdy is on his rookie contract, yeah. like with Brandon Ayuk, right, like with, you know, Trent Williams now. Like, it's pretty interesting how they're already having these issues. So I can't really imagine when Brock Purdy does get his money, you know, what that could possibly be after this season, how, like, much that, the like, they might have struggles, right, because you still have Debo Samuel. You have Fred Warner. We have Charvarius Ward. You have Debo Samuel. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot of guys on this roster that you have, even that I didn't name. So it's just going to be crazy because, like, bro, they got a lot of killers. They're, so they're like, going to yeah. Yeah. They're, so, they're have to let go of some people for sure. Yeah. Like, isn't Brock Purdy still living with a roommate and, like, he just <laughs> played in the Super Bowl? Like, they're going to literally have to, like – and they're already having a ton of contract issues. Like, yeah. it might get spooky. Yeah, it's it's gonna be rough potentially. Um, and how does that like? How does your team? How does that affect your team morale? Morale, like your team chemistry. You know, if you feel like you're that type of caliber player that's getting paid, that should be getting paid, and you're not, and like another guy next to you 
is getting paid? Like, how does that affect you as well? So I, I don't know. The Niners need to figure – either win a Super Bowl finally or figure that out. Like, I think that's yeah. the things that they literally need to do, bro. Yeah. Like, I, I think if you win a bowl, it'll solve, solve everything, you know? Yeah, definitely. Um, and I'm still – no clue what is going to happen with Ayuk. Like, bro, what is going on? Like, <laughs> I feel crazy. like he's going to stay at this point, but I have no clue. No clue. So they got to figure it out. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Plain simple. they got to figure that out. Um, but yeah, then my last thing, something that made, made me happy. You know, I've seen uh, some clips of Lonzo getting back, playing some five on five action, looking good, moving well. Um, you know, hopefully he's going to be back at some point this year, whether it's at the start or not of the season. You know, just want to see him back on the court. But, you know, maybe, maybe feel good that he's been uh, playing some five-on-five five recently. So, yeah. That's... If I was Lonzo Ball, I would come back next season. Here's why. Right? I don't. This year is kind of, like, weird for y'all, right? You traded tomorrow and everything like that. You still have Levine and Vooch, though. You know, you still have Kobe White, who had a great year, and, like, you drafted Matas. So, like, are you guys trying to tank or are you guys still trying to compete? Like, like I've heard both sides from, like, the organization. So, after this year, if you guys are bad, you get a top 10 pick or top 5 pick. Maybe you get Ace Bailey, a VJ Edgecombe, or, or whoever or whoever you get, Dylan Harper. You come back next year with that new draft class coming in. That's really good. I think that would, like, bring Bulls basketball back to life. But I don't know. That's just me, though. But other than that, though, bro, like, it, it's cool to see Lonzo back. I, I saw a lot of people talking about the lob he threw, like, his kind of leg kind of, like, he was kind of, like, tripping on it or something like that. People were like, oh, it's over. I'm like, guys, like, can y'all relax, man? But, yeah, uh, it, it's cool to see Lonzo back playing, bro. Like, I think Lonzo back ball is just one of those people who are good for the NBA, like, in general, from a basketball standpoint in a marketing standpoint. So he's going to bring in that box office revenue for the NBA always. And yeah, it's, it's a good person to have on your team. Yeah, definitely agree. He's fun to watch. Um, and with him, we were, you know, the one seed. And then, uh, that Caruso Lonzo defensive yeah. backcourt was nasty. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I hope to see him back, you know, so I, I know bringing in Josh Giddy is kind of, Kind of showed me that they might want to move off him or don't expect him to play or whatever. Um, yeah. But, you know, we'll see. Uh, yeah, whether it's with the Bulls or not, it's like you said, he's just good for the league. So, yeah. um, same with LaMelo, too. He's got to get healthy as well. Oh, my gosh, bro. Like, Listen, bro, if LaMelo is healthy, he, he can be an all NBA guy. Like, he is that good. Like, I, yeah. I swear, when he's healthy, he's a walking 26, 9, and 4. Like, yeah. he legitimately is, bro. Yeah. Yeah, he's – I, I kind of want to see them play together, but I don't know how that would work, you know. But, yeah, LaMelo's – he's definitely got a lot of upside. Um, just want to see uh, see him with another, like, a superstar because I feel like he would – that would elevate his game too as well if he, if he got, like, a legitimate like star next to him. You remember them big ball of brand shoes? <laughs> yeah <laughs> that was funny bro i remember zo i there was like an interview with zo told like his dad lavar he's like i, I can't wear these anymore <laughs> oh my goodness yeah. yeah but yeah another team that probably will never win a championship the charlotte hornets so yeah they're just like you said earlier those those organizations man they're just you just know like yeah it's 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 gonna be like all, like it's just shocking if some of these teams win at all, um, but yeah, it's a shame. Charlotte's a great city. Yeah, like I've been there. I've yeah. been to a Hornets game. It's a nice city. So yeah, it's a they, shame uh, the team isn't good. They uh they traded your goat. Could could have had him, you know. So Maybe, yeah, yeah, that's another reason why they won't win too. That's the main <laughs> reason they traded that boy, Kobe Bean Bryant. You know, that's another reason as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, anything else you got um, before we wrap up here? Nah, man, that's it. I'm good to go. Yes, sir. So, oh, yeah. Quick hitters, man. Quick hitters. 
Appreciate y'all for tuning in, man. And uh, yeah, next week we'll be back. Same old stuff. Uh, make sure you like and subscribe, and we'll see y'all next time.